Um, Twenty seventh, I think. Um, whatever day it was, it was the day where I pray I missed my last judgment. I missed my last duty. This is what I pray. Um, let us pray while we at it. Uh, Heavenly Father. Creator of all things seen and unseen. I ask you right now to cover what is laid on my heart to do. For this is all I have to give. I pray that you deliver me from myself, keep me from speaking anything in which I don't wholeheartedly believe. Help me to speak it with solitude, solidity. Help me to do what only you can do through me keep me very thin as possible I pray so that whatever message you want to get out shall be relayed hopefully this is pleasing to you as I always try to be in everything I do please let this be something that you prove for me I don't seek men's approval but it needs to be approved to men so you have to work that out and all the, every, all the other things in which I fail to mention I ask that you hearken those things and provide them send Timothy is here send your Holy Spirit to have her way without permission through and through this place I pray that you keep anyone or any, anything, any form of anything out of here. Let it just be you and I and the Holy Spirit. I don't want, if it's your will, I pray it's just us. These things I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm going to, I'm not going to be, um, let me get my spirits up. It's a very down time for me because um, it's just a down time. But there's an up time and I'm hoping to reach that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take as much time as it takes. And I'm going to start at the very beginning. And I'm going to try to walk you guys the exact way I came and I'm going to I'm what I'm going to do is what I'm going to attempt to do is speak on things that can only be proven by uh, video footage and me reporting and things of a time hopefully I can walk you guys through each time that's that's up to the Holy Spirit in which I believe 100% that the way in which I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is pleasing. And I hope she can, well not I hope she can, but I just speak, speak clarity into this message and it is her job to witness between me and anybody else who is in need of these things. Everybody else, let it be a snare to those who needs to be a snare. Let it be a, a reproach to those who need to be a reproach. Let it be a light and a lamp unto those in which I don't want to leave stranded. For I still want to 
do as much as I can in the duty in, in which I, I'm aware of. I'm going to speak everything I know. If I don't know it, I don't know it. But it is, just let it be known amongst all. Even the things in which I don't know that, I, that I'm known of. I ask that you make that clear. Each level, each layer that I've, that I've peeled back through Christ and through the Holy Spirit not by my own hand for I'm not totally sinless anymore I'm not um, the same the same person I used to be but I believe that God you told me I am still special and I want to bring whatever special I have within me to this message so we can break bread. We're going to start in Ezra. Now, one day uh, um, I was going through, you know, I was pretty much down to nothing else. That's how I believe God works. He He brings you to a point where you have no one else to call on no one else can can deliver you and he makes sure that he is the one who gets the glory for he is the hand in which you come out by I believe I always express that however arrogant it may sound however boasting it may have come off however wrong it may have been to do I believe I always um, try to give the most purest form of a displaying or packaging of the gospel in a way that would captivate, but it's not my job to captivate. It's not my job, so I'm going to stick to the scriptures, but I am I am going to give you guys commentary and speak in the way in which I came so you guys can get an understanding of what I did, how I handled certain battles and what my perception is of it, because I believe that is the most important thing. And that is to. Um. It's the doctrine of Christ. Not in this full complexity, but for the way it was fulfilled within me. All right. If I say something wrong, please forgive me, man. I'm just doing what I... I feel like I'm doing what God told me to do. I have to think of myself in certain ways. You have to perceive yourself in certain ways in order to hold on to Christ because you could you could you could let them slip. You say hold on or or let you let these things slip. So if I thought something that may have seemed wrong to you then there's wrong there. And it's up to us to figure out honestly between me and Whoever, you know, we can agree. I don't have no problem saying I was wrong. I really don't. But my wrongs are taken up to the Father, man. And anybody else who had their hands on those wrongs, let me not go down that road. Anyone who tried to declare what was wrong with me, you're wrong. Because you take yours up to the Father and you and the Father deal with your follies and your shortcomings between the two of you. For mine to be plastered, which I feel, I'm not sure, I don't, I've never seen myself in a group or anything, but I feel like I'm 
shared and talked about amongst people, especially coming from my home, Israel. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but it is my truth. I've only felt the real spirit has been real help as much as someone can help me. I've only felt it from a couple. And even then, they have to be very cautious. They tiptoe around what they can say. And I can do nothing but respect it because I do understand that they are moving according to what the Lord says to, for them to do in their mind. So for that, there is respect for it. But for me, it is a stumbling block. So let us not stumble over anything and just speak about the things we know. Everything else, truth needs to come in that form from one who's understanding of those truths. Ezra chapter 1. Now, um, like I say, I was at a point where I was very low. You know what I'm saying? I had lost a lot of friends, relationships. I had lost... Um, you know, just lost confidence in having a normal life for, this has been going on for years, you know what I mean? And it had been going on for years before I even came to the scriptures. I had, I was at a, I was at a low point and I prayed to God, I prayed to God big credits to um, give credit where credit is due uh, Lonish Robinson she told me of a formula in which um, the Lord manifested himself to her and her history she gave me that I will let you know that where she prayed and opened the scriptures and had faith and the Lord showed her some things in scripture just by opening it up and believing that he would show you something randomly so that's what I did now, we all know I was born with a veil and there is prophecies and whoop de whoop de whoop and blah blah blah, which is not in scripture, but I have to give you the back story. I've always knew that I was, I always knew of a power greater than man and greater than, you know what I'm saying? And also of knowledge and information, for I've prophesied before as a child and a couple occasions once. I remember specifically, no matter how that story is relayed from here, what I'm telling you is what I believe and what I know to be my truth. Everything I say is my truth. It will have documents or something to back it up. So um, from that point on, once I got old enough to actually make a decision, I was said that to myself, I was like, well, God, I remember this. I don't know how young I was, but I was young. And I said, God, whenever you want to call me to do whatever it is you want me to do, I want you to call me very specially. Like I need you to, I need to make sure it's you. So I don't know how you're going to do it, but I need you to call me in a way that's at the time, I didn't understand, but now I know it was the term was supernatural. I need you to contact me divinely. And he used this word to do that on that day. It was um, September is when um, Ezra came to life. And I'll tell you exactly when, but we're going to start from the beginning. I don't even know where at where in Ezra that I started, but we're gonna start from the beginning here. I'm gonna just read a quick um gonna read a quick um historical and theological theme. I'm reading out of the Big up John MacArthur, we speak over time and dimension is what I believe. I'm not totally sure, but I do know that. That's what the Spirit laid on my mind. The English Standard Version, the John MacArthur Study Bible. 
also a Bible that was handed down to me from Lanish Robinson, which is the one whom I have understood birthed me. The one who raised me as best she could. From my understanding. The Jews returned from Babylon. Babylonian captivity seemed like a second exodus. Sovereignly patterned in some ways after Israel's first redemption from Egyptian bondage. The return trip from Babylon involved reinstitution of the law, which made Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah collectively seem like a second seconding in idolatry okay so it's a rubber bell Ezra Nehemiah other parallels between the original exodus and the return from Babylon must have seemed to the returnees like they were given a fresh start by God. In his account of the return, Ezra drew upon a collection of Persian administrative documents to which he had access as a scribe. The presence of actual royal administrative documents carries a powerful message when accompanied by the resounding line the hand of the Lord his my that means his slash my the hand of the Lord his slash my God was on him slash me So the way MacArthur puts that, it already is showing you, in my opinion, that there's a dual planting of the hand of the Lord. His my God was upon him slash me. So there's a his and there's a my. There's a him and there's a me. Chapter 7, verse 6, and verse 28 says, The decrees, proclamations, letters, lists, genealogies, and memoranda, many of them written by the Persian administration, attest to the sovereign hand of God in Israel's restoration. This is true. The primary message of the book is that God orchestrated the past grim situation, captivity, which I was experiencing and would continue to work through a pagan king and his successors to give Judah hope for the future return the pagan king was me I was in sin I was had a lot of idols as far as uh, what I thought was valuable in life so that's what made me a pagan in my understanding God's administration overrides that of any of the kings of this world and thus the book of Ezra is a message of God's continuing covenant grace to Israel we're going to be speaking a lot before this is over about covenants alright mostly about the new covenant is what I'm trying to reveal to you guys Another prominent theme that surfaces is Ezra's opposition from the local Samaritan residents whose ancestors had been imported from Assyria. Now that is chapter 4 verse 2. Uh, John also chapter 4 verses 4 through 42. So that's John 4, 4 through 42.
done is where I found Christ, just saying. For reasons of spiritual sabotage, Israel's enemies requested to participate in rebuilding the temple. That's Ezra 4, verses 1 through 2. This is MacArthur's words in the historical and theological themes. These are not my words, but these are my realities. God, okay, hold on. Rebuilding the temple. After being shunned, the enemies hired councils, counselors against the Jews. Chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. But the Lord, through the preaching of Haggai and Zechariah, rekindled the spirit of the people and their leaders to build with the words, with the words, be strong. Work, for I am with you. Haggai 2 and 4, Ezra 4, 24 through chapter 5, verse 2. The reconstruction resumed and the temple was soon finished, dedicated and back in service to God. Let's get right to the word, man. We don't, because that's, you know, a man's definition. All right. Proclamation of Cyrus. In the first year, now, I'm going to, I'm going to do precepts um, whenever I feel, whenever I'm moved to do them for, you can only get true knowledge by doing the precepts. You know what I mean? Looking at the precepts and following them back to uh, define uh, a term. I'm just getting into the power of that later on. For I was a a reader straight, like a novel or something, and that's not all the all all the time good to do if you want to, you know, peel back layers. But if you're just on the flesh, which where I was, then you read straight through, and you will get the first manifold. And if I thank the Lord while I'm reading, don't think I'm trying to show out. I, I, I have to thank him sometimes. I won't even say that. In the first year of King Cyrus, of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So whoever is among you of all his people, may God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. And rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the guy who is in Jerusalem. And let each survivor in whatever place he sojourns be assisted by the men of his place. With silver and gold, with goods and with beasts besides free will offerings for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Free will offerings had a lot to do with things I'll say that I didn't understand the power of those but looking back uh, free will offerings were a big part of the early church because it symbolizes faith and we don't have any oaths you know to take so that's a form of pleasure for God because it's something you he's not telling you to do 
It's a free will. That's where your free will comes in, mostly, in my opinion. Then rose up the heads of the fathers, houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem. I believe all those people, all those people are a place, or a place in my heart, or a place in my inside of me. All those on a different manifold symbolizes their symbols everything is a symbol even names once you get to a higher manifold i'm giving you this early because once i start going into those things i want you to know how i came by those and i didn't have them while first reading so it's good that you know this and all who were about them aided them with vessels of silver with gold, with goods, with beasts, and with costly wares, besides all that was freely offered. Cyrus the king also brought out the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the house of his gods. Cyrus, king of Persia, brought these out in the charge of Mithridad, the treasurer. I don't think I came this early into the uh, scripture, but we're going to start from the beginning. Who counted them out to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. And this was the number of them. 30 bases of gold, 1,000 bases of silver, 29 censers, 30 bowls of gold, 400 and ten bowls of silver and one thousand other vessels. All the vessels of gold and of silver were five thousand four hundred. I still don't know what the gold and stuff is. All these did Sheshbazar bring up when the exiles were brought up from Babylon to Jew Jerusalem. I have an idea though the exiles returned now these were the people of the providence who came up out of the captivity of those exiles whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried captive to Babylonia they returned to Jerusalem and Judah each to his own town they came with Zerubbabel Jeshua not Joshua but J-E-S-H-U-A Yes, yes, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Reclia, Mordecai, I know Mordecai personally in the flesh. I still talk, man, that's... Bill Shine, Miss Parr, Big Vi, Rahum, and Bana, B A A N A H. The number of the men of the people of Israel, the sons of Parush, 2,172, the sons of Shep Hatiah, 372, the sons of Arod, 775, the sons of Please don't frown up on me skipping those. I'm going to skip past all of the sins a lot. That's what the scriptures were saying. I had a lot of people with me at the beginning. The priests, the sons of Jediah of the house of Jeshua, 973. Hold on, we're still on those. Let's go down, okay. All right, we're on verse 43 of the second chapter. That's where the numbers in. Oh, the sons of the gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, the sons of Akter, the sons of Talmon, the sons of Akub, the sons of 
Hatita, H A T I T A, Hatita, and the sons of Shabai, in all 139. I'm pretty sure they, a lot of them have given up by now. The temple servants, the son of Ziha, the sons of Hasupa, the sons of Taboeth, the sons of Kiros, the sons of Sheha, the sons of Padan, the sons of Lebanon, the sons of Hagabah, the sons of Aku, the sons of Hajab, the sons of Sham Shamlai, the sons of Hanan, the sons of Gidel, the sons of Gehar, the sons of Riaha, the sons of Reason, what? The sons of uh, Nikoda, the sons of Gazam, the sons of Uza, the sons of Pashe, the sons of Bisa, the sons of Ashna, the sons of Minum, the sons of Nephisim. Nephism. Hmm. It looks like Nephilim almost. The sons of Bak Bakbuk, the sons of Hakupa, H A K U P H A, the sons of Harhor, the sons of Basluth, the sons of Mihada, the sons of Harsha, the sons of Barkos, the sons of Caesarea, the sons of Tima, the sons of Messiah, the sons of Hatipa, the sons of Solomon's servants. I'm going to name them all because they all deserve respect. Sorry for the ones I missed up. I skipped over, I mean. Uh, the sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of Sotai, the sons of Hasopereth, the sons of Pruda, the sons of Jela, the sons of Darkon, the sons of Gidel, the sons of Sepata, the sons of Hatil, the sons of the sons of Pakrith, Hazobam, and the sons of Amin. All the temple servants and the sons of Solomon's servants were 392. The following were those who came up from Telma. Tel Harsha, Cherub, Adan, and Emer. Hmm. Maybe this is meant for me to read it now. Well, it's meant for me to read it now. I didn't come here. Hmm. There you go, Father. Okay, show me a light. <sighs> Though they could not prove their father's houses or their descent, whether they belong to Israel, the sons of Deliah, the sons of Tobiah, the sons of... Okay, these are the ones who couldn't prove they belong to Israel. The sons of Nicoda, 652, also of the sons of the priests, the sons of Hebiah, the sons of Hakos, the sons of Barzillai, who had taken a wife from the daughters of Barzillai, the Galdites and was called by their name. These sought their registration among those enrolled in the genealogies, but they were not found there. And so they were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. Hmm. The governor told them that they were not to partake of the most holy food until there should be a priest to consult. Urim and Thummim. Now, Thummim sounds like a name that um, my mother went to a dinner before, and she got kind of upset and left and took her male friend there, but she said something about a feast, and I thought it sounded very, you know, I thought it sounded spiritual, you know what I mean? But I do understand that my aunt's kinfolk, a brother, is named Thummim. 
I don't know about Urim, but I do remember Thurman. Thurman and something like that. Maybe it's not the same person, but that's what it brings to mind. I'm, I'm revealing everything that comes to mind. I'm, I don't, I, no secrets, transparent. Everything, I know. This is going to be hours long. The whole assembly together was 42,360, besides their male and female servants, of whom they were 7,337. 7, 7, and 3, 3 is there. And they had 200 male and female singers. Their horses were 736. Their mules were 245. Their camels were 435. And their donkeys were 607, 6,720. I don't know what how those manifest in the spirit. I don't know about mules, chariots. I'm just getting to that. Once I start missing judgments, I start understanding chariots and things before I'm trying to find my way there. But that's the that's God's job in his time. But me at this moment, I don't have an understanding of those. I wish I did. Some of the heads of families, when they came to the house of the Lord that is in Jerusalem, made freewill offerings for the house of God to erect it on its site. Now, the heads of families, when they came to the house of the Lord that is in, in Jerusalem, I don't know how that pertains in a different manifold, but I do know that. Um, I gave up all smoking. I, on a couple of occasions, I took. Once I had like a little vaporizer I had, and I was reading the Bible, and it was talking about free will offering, and immediately I took the vaporizer. I had just paid like 56 bucks for this vaporizer, which is nothing, but um, I threw it out in the street and broke it. My neighbor across the street can verify that if y'all know him. Because <laughs> he was standing out there watching. And I just stood up and threw my vaporizer and it landed in the middle of the street broken. That was after I had gave up. Why well, I dedicated just my attention to. Um, finding finding what, what God wanted me to see. Because the way he brought me out is it's going. I'm going to reveal it to y'all soon. Now the priests, the Levites, some of the people, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the temple servants lived in their towns, and all the rest of Israel in their towns. When the seventh month came, and the children of Israel were in the towns, the people gathered as one man to Jerusalem. Then arose Jeshua, the son of Jesodak with his fellow priests and Zerubbabel the son of Sheltai Sheltel with his kinsmen and they built the altar of God of Israel to offer burnt offerings on it as it is written in the law of Moses there's a another covenant um, reference when you see Moses you have to understand that's the first covenant okay the man of God so I came here by the way of Moses and the covenant with the works with acts that means working with your hand things you do with your hands and things you sacrifice with your hands and ways you operate or according to the Ten Commandments they set the altar in its place for field was on them because of the peoples of the land, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord. Burnt offerings morning and evening never stopped. And they kept the feast of booths, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the rule, as each day required. And after that, the regular burnt offerings the offerings at the new moon and at all the appointed feast of the Lord and the offerings of everyone who made a free will offering to the Lord so my offerings were added into there when it says free will offering I guess that was mine maybe I'm not sure 
From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. So they gave money to the masons and the carpenters and food, drink, and oil to the Sidonians and the Tyrians to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea to Joppa according to the grant that they had from Cyrus king of Persia now in the second year after their coming to the house of God at Jerusalem in the second month Zerubbabel the son of Sheltel and Joshua the son of Josadak made a beginning together with the rest of the kinsmen the priests and the Levites and all whom had come to Jerusalem from the captivity they appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to supervise the work of the house of the Lord and Jeshua with his sons and his brothers and Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, together supervised the workmen in the house of the Lord. Along with the sons of Hinnadad and the Levites, their sons and brothers. Man, Earl, you was there from the beginning, man. I did not know that. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments came forward with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord, according to the directions of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever towards Israel. And all the people shouted with great, with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and heads of fathers' houses, old men who had seen the first house, wept with a loud voice when they saw the foundation of this house being laid. So that is this house right now. Though many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people weeping. For the people shouted with a great shout, and the sound was heard far away. In my heart, I'm hurt doing this because I know where I came from, but inside of me rejoices because I know my God is real and his promise is, is true so I look forward to something still no matter how how it looks right now adversaries oppose the rebuilding now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the returned exiles were building a temple to the Lord the God of Israel they approached Zerubbabel and the heads of fathers houses and said to them let us build with you for we worship your God as you do and we have been sacrificing to him ever since the days of Esarhaddon king of Assyria who brought us here but Zerubbabel Joshua and the rest of the heads of the fathers houses in Israel said to him you have nothing to do with us in the building of the house of our God but we alone will build to the Lord the God of Israel isn't that what I asked for at the beginning as King Cyrus the king of Persia had commanded us then the people of the land discouraged the people of Judah and made them afraid to build and bribed counselors against them to 
frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus king of Persia even until the reign of Darius king of Persia that's not an exaggeration I was going through hell in my opinion and in the reign of Azarius, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. I've heard a few of those come back. In the days of Artaxerxes, Xerxes, Bishlam and Mithridath and Tabel, and the rest of their associates wrote to Artaxerxes, king of Persia. The letter was written in Aramaic and translated. Rehum the commander and Shimshai the scribe wrote a letter against. Okay. Rehum the commander. Let me circle that precept. Rehum the commander and Shimshai. The scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Anaxerxes, the king, as follows. Rehum the commander, Shimshai the scribe, and the rest of their associates, the judges, the governors, the officials, the Persians, the men of Erech, the Babylonians, the men of Susa, Erech is E-R-E-C-H, the men of Susa, that is the Elamites. And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapar deported and settled in the cities of Samaria. And then the rest of the providence beyond the river. This is a copy of the letter that they sent to Artaxerxes the king, your servant, the men of the province beyond the river send greeting. And now. Be it known to the king that the Jews who came up from you to us have gone to Jerusalem. They are rebuilding that rebellious and wicked city. They are finishing the walls and repairing the foundations. Wicked, huh? Now be it known to the king that if this city is rebuilt and the walls finished, they will not pay tribute, custom, or toll, and the royal revenue will be impaired. Let's get, I just want to say something real quick. My only wish is to do the will of God if it's written in his word specifically. I would never want to do nothing outside of his will if I have anything to do with it. I do trust that God has me here for a reason, but in my heart I always try to do his will. I always try to, to try to make sure I was doing what his, his will according to the best I could now because we eat the salt of the palace and it is not fitting for us to witness the king's dishonor therefore we send and inform the king in order that search may be made in the book of the records of your fathers you will find in the book of records and learn that this city is a rebellious city hurtful to kings and providences and that sedition was stirred up in it from of old that was why this city was laid waste <laughs> we make known to the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls finished you will have no possession in the province beyond the river. The king orders the work to cease. The king sent an answer to Rehum the commander and 
Shimshai the scribe, and the rest of their associates who live in Samaria and in the rest of the province beyond the river, greeting. And now, the letter that you sent to us have been plainly read before me, and I made a decree. And search has been made, and it has been found that this city from of old has risen against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made in it. And mighty kings have been over Jerusalem, who ruled over the whole providence beyond the river to whom tribute, custom, and toll were paid. Therefore, make a decree that those men be not, I mean, be made to cease. <laughs> Sounds like something I have to do. Hold on. Okay. I decree in this moment. That those who rule over providence beyond the, beyond the river should not take double portion of something that they should take or they have taken or received. I decree this moment that anything that has been done already and paid has already been paid. You should not have to pay again. Whatever that means. Whatever is already fulfilled according to the word of God and your understanding and truth in that. In truth, if it's according to the will of God, may it be done so. May it be so. I decree that these men be made to cease and that this city be not rebuilt until a decree is made by me. There you have it. And take care not to be slack in this manner. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the king? Father, I hope I did that right. In my heart, I feel like I've done that before I even knew that. So it's, it's proven to me that that has some, for, some form of divine divinity into it because I immediately done it and then afterwards was shown that this temple can't be built unless I make a decree. Then, when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shim, Shimshai, the scribe and their associates, they went haste to the Jews at Jerusalem, and by force and power made them cease. Then the work on the house of God that is in Jerusalem stopped. And it ceased until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. We are there. It's been the second year since I came through Zechariah and went to that place. I remember that was the second year. Second year of, of the king Darius is a very important thing for me. Let me get my paper. I need to write some of this down. We got to go back and touch these things. Rebuilding begins anew. Now the prophets Haggai and Zechariah. I think Haggai was where we were. Today that the spirit showed me afterwards that um, the angel was over destroying Jerusalem and he looked down, the Lord looked down and um, forgave the sins or something the spirit took me to today, forgave the, the, the sin 
and stopped the destruction because he felt sorry for what they seen the Lord felt sorry for what he seen he had mercy because I was sitting there lost knowing that I'm right on the cusp of something that I need to do and I'm trying but lost that's what I feel that's what I was feeling now the prophets Haggai and Zechariah the son of Adu prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel who was over them in the name of the God of Israel Zechariah which I mentioned before the scripture said Zechariah I, I haven't read this part of Ezra so it is new to me too this is the truth Zechariah was awakened it's time for you to see okay that was the morning when I was waking up I was woke up like in the middle of the night and I don't think I was woken up but I was just um, hurried in the spirit and I opened the book and I had Zechariah and what I was looking at was the back of the I Am Bible. It's a, it's a Holman book called I Am Bible. Okay? And I looked at the back of the map. And I was like, this was after I had understood Christ and after I was coming into the knowledge of uh, Jesus Christ and walking in unison. Um... I said, you know what, let me test this because I've already looked through scriptures and everything and I, it took me a week to get over John, a week and a half almost, to get over John and what I had discovered there. So after that, once I was, I tested that and looked it through doctrine and, and through the Holy Spirit and through just conviction in my heart, I had to stand on those things. So... I looked in the back of the book. I was like, you know what? If this is true, then this would have to be Bethlehem right here. This would have to be the house of God. This would have to be where Christ is, right? So, I lie to you not. Holy, the Holy Spirit will do its job. He reveal these things somewhere. But anyway... Um, you know, I traced it and then I looked up the back and I was like, okay, so I traced it from where, um, the house was Bethlehem. All right. And I traced it up and I looked at the wall of King of David and I looked at the, you know, I just walked up and I walked to the left. I went to West Orem and I made a left on West Orem. Now, as I'm reading, it's saying, behold, the, the, uh, it was telling me that. All of the earth was still. I was it. By the time the end of that thing came, I understood that that was a form of judgment day or a form of um, or day of the Lord, one or two. But I knew it was a form of judgment that needed to be taken place that with myself. And also on the places where I land at now. It was a judgment on that place. Now, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm confused there because that's one of the major bricks in between myself and the ones who I suffered the most for. Um, in all honesty and truth, um, it was a, it was a foggy, dark blank, like with nobody on the road. And it was throwing me off because I'm walking in the, in the spirit and the book is telling me how the day is looking. Right. So already my spirit is quickened and I'm, I'm walking and believing and it's taking me step by step. Right. As I'm walking, I don't even know how I got to Zachariah, to be honest. I just, I was, I was at Zachariah. Show you something too, so you know. I'm happy. There's two 
two books going to be looking a lot different. And one of them is Zechariah, one of the dirtiest books in this I Am book. I'm going to take you to Zechariah real quick. Now, hold on. Get my spot. I don't know if you can see that, but look at all the spots, the dirt. Zechariah. See the dirt on that? None of my other pages are that dirty. They all crispy white. Every other page is white. Every other page. Every other page is white. Every other one. But when you get to this one, see all the dirt here, here. Look at this. That lets you know that that book is dirty. So I was had dirt on my hands, and I had uh, dirt on my hands while I was handling that book. That's all that that proves. So let that be a, a truth. That is a truth. Can't prove what day it was, but all I can show you is when I'm speaking on this to you, that book got dirt on it, and that's. It's been there. May the Lord and the Holy Spirit witness that I didn't do that to try to be believable. For it was raining when Isaiah, and I'll show you that one time too when we get there. And that's in a whole nother book. Matter of fact, I'll show it to you now so you won't think I'm capping. And I did it after the recording. I'm just letting the Spirit lead me and I'm going to take my time. If you got something you got to do, you might just be doing it right now. Look at this Isaiah book. Uh, where is it at? When it, ah, here it is. See this? Look at how it's looked like it's been rained on. See? For I was at another place, which is right around here. There are there are places I've been. Looking behind a certain veil and showing certain things in the spirit of God. And I, I hold those things very dear to my heart because I've never been shown any truth other than when I sat at the foot of the Father. And I never had nobody tell me no truth that solid. So that's why I believe and stand so strong on my beliefs because it's something I experience. It's the truth. Truth can't be can't be bought or bargained with. This this truth is there by itself. We must understand these things. If we're ever to make it somewhere, we have to understand how important um, truth is. Even to my own reproach, man, I'm going to be admitting things to you. The Holy Spirit says I'm going to be admitting some things to you that. Some of you already knew, but you might not knew how. Some of you may have thought, and you may have thought wrong about it. So, I'm just going to tell the truth about it. For uh, If I wanted to keep some secret, I couldn't keep no secrets. This we know. Alright, now the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Adu, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. So you understand something that's um, take hold of that thing, that experience with Zechariah because that's going to be a, a major key in understanding uh, stumbling blocks and also understanding new covenant doctrine and also um, bringing the the saints, bringing the saints, the ones who are of a different fold, those that's going to be a way and by which they are to come and understand the overstanding of things. I believe. I believe I have a 
a truth for them and they have a truth for me which will complete both of us this I know not by experience but just cause the spirit is that strong in his conviction telling me we can't make it without each other we can't you can't make it without me and I can't make it without you for we are a part of one another I believe that 100% I believe it then Zerubbabel the son of Sheltel we are on chapter 5 verse 2 and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, arose and began to rebuild the house of God that is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. See, I'm, I'm declaring this right now. Every time something confirms in scripture, something that I said before, it's not planned. It's not planned. So you start, you are to understand how the Holy Spirit works and how even understanding is made when you're walking in the spirit. You're never, you're rarely ever shown a walk of the way you got to go before you make it there. You rarely ever get that. What you get is a, a, a briefing and then you experience it and you walk through it and go through it. And then after it's done. The Holy Spirit will bring to you wisdom and things to let you know what it was that happened. That way, you can tie it all together over different manifolds. You get what I'm saying? The, the wisdom of, of the Holy Spirit is manifold. It has layers, but it also ties the same way as a straight line. There's no breaking in the understand it it only gives you a deeper understanding of something that you've already understood if that makes any sense I hope it does take your time pause it think about it at the same time Tatsina T-A-T-T-E-N-A-I the governor of the province beyond the river okay so that's who the governor is we to identify these people Beyond the river and Shitar Bosna and their associates came to them and spoke to them this. Thus, I mean, who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure? They also asked him this. What are the names of the men who are building this building? But the eye of their God was on the elders of the Jews, and they did not stop them until the report should reach Darius, and then an answer be returned by letter concerning it. Okay. Let's take my time. But the eye of their God was on the elders of the Jews, and they did not stop them until the report should reach Darius and then an answer be returned by a letter concerning it. This is a copy of the letter that Tatsun Tatsunia, the governor of the province beyond the river and Shithar Bosna and his associates, the governors who were in the providence beyond the river, sent to Darius the king. They sent him a report in which was written as follows, To Darius the king, all peace. Be it known to the king that we went to the providence of Judah, to the house of the great God. It is being built with huge stones. And timber is laid in the walls. This work goes on diligently and prosperous in their lands. Then we asked those elders and spoke to them thus. Who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure? 
We also ask them their names for your information. That we might write down the names of their leaders. And this was their reply to us. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. And we are rebuilding the house that was built many years ago. Which a great king of Israel built and finished. But because our fathers had angered the God of heaven. He gave them into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Chaldean. I just had Operation Raise the Chaldeans again not too long ago. That's what I was told to say. Who destroyed this house and carried away the people to Babylonia. However, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon... Cyrus the king made a decree that this house of God should be rebuilt and the gold and silver vessels of the house of God which Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought into the temple of Babylon these Cyrus the king took out of the temple of Babylon and they were delivered to one whose name was Sheshbazar Write that down. Ezra. That's chapter 5, verse 14. Whom he had made governor. And he said to him, Take those vessels, go and put them in the temple that is in Jerusalem. And let the house of God be revealed on this site. Then this Shezbazar came and laid the fountains of the house of God that is in Jerusalem. And from that time until now, it has been in building. And it is not yet finished. Therefore, if it seems good to the king... Let search be made in the royal archives there in Babylon to see whether a decree was issued by Cyrus the king for the rebuilding of this house of God in Jerusalem. And let the king send us his pleasure in this matter. I think my prayer at the beginning symbolizes my full um, wishes. I wish nothing more, nothing less. I wish nothing more, nothing less, but for that prayer to be answered. I don't want nothing else. Oh, I want the Lord to come back and redeem me. <laughs> and come, come gather me. And make right his promise that he made. Because I'm standing on that. Then Darius the king made a decree. And search was made in Babylonia in the house of the archives where the documents were stored. You have free reign. Read all of the documents. You got all the time you need. Read everything you want to is open. All the records. And in Ek Batana, the capital that is in the province of Medea or Media. A scroll was found on which this was written. A record in the first year of Cyrus the king. Cyrus the king issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where sacrifices were offered, and let its foundations be retained. Its height shall be 60 cubits and its breadth 60 cubits with three layers of great stones and one layer of timber. Let the cost be paid from the royal treasury. And also 
If it's royal you from this house, we need to pay for a lot. We need to pay for a lot. Because I don't even hold none of those royals. They need to pay for a lot. And also let the gold and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that is in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, be restored and brought back to the temple that is in Jerusalem, each to its place. You shall put them in the house of God. Father, keep me of a contract spirit. Let me not get puffed up, man. Now, therefore, Tatnia. The governor of Providence beyond the river, Shethar, Bosna, and your associates, the governors who are in the Providence beyond the river, keep away. Let the work on this house of God alone. Thank you. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you shall do for these elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of this house of God. The cost is to be paid to these men in full and without delay from the royal revenue. Thank you. The tribute of the providence from beyond the river and whatever is needed, bulls, rams, or sheep for burnt offerings to the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, or oil as the priests at Jerusalem require, let that be given to them day by day without fail, that they may offer pleasing sacrifices to God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. Also, I make a decree. Wait, let me. I decree. For these elders of the Jews. For the rebuilding of this house of God. The cost is to be paid to these men in full and without delay. No hesitation. From the royal revenue. If the royal revenue is this house. Pay quickly. The tribute of the providence. From beyond the river. And whatever is needed. Bulls, rams or sheep. Burnt offerings to the God of heaven. Wheat, salt, wine or oil. As the priests at Jerusalem require. Whatever they require is to come out of the royal revenue. I decree it this moment. Let that be given to them day by day without fail. That they may offer pleasing sacrifices to God of heaven. And pray for the life of the king and his sons. These are the things that you shall do. So shall it be. Also I make a decree. That if anyone alters this edict, a beam shall be pulled out of his house, and he shall be impaled on it, and his house shall be made a dunghill. May you get our decree. If anyone alters this edict, may you get what the word of God says you are to receive. In its many manifolds. Verse 12. So shall it be. May the God who has caused his name to dwell there. Overthrow any king or people who shall put out a hand to alter this. Thank you. Jesus. Or 
to destroy this house of God that is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, make a decree. Let it be done with all diligence. Look at God. The temple finished and dedicated. Then, according to the word sent by Darius the king, Tatna, oh wait, Tatina, the governor of the province beyond the river, Shethar Bosna. Let me write that. I also declare that if these people are people that anybody that's named in this Ezra book who are of dwelling of mine own habitation, make yourself known to me in truth. You are to make yourself known to me. In truth, for I shall not be confused about who is who any longer. If it is the will of God, so shall it be. Shut their Bosnia and their associate at, at, at the right time for any, all things have a time. Did with all diligence what Darius the king had ordered. And the elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Adu. Should Haggai prophesy? Yes, he should because it says it. Okay. What do I know about Haggai? where I started seeing Zerubbabel at. Sure is. For I just left this scripture, Haggai. Um not too long ago. I'm going to start at verse 10. No, we're not. Let's we'll start at the beginning. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, we're in Haggai. Chapter 1, it says, I was ordered to do this. So we're going to flip over to Haggai. We stopped at Ezra, chapter 6, verse 14. And I still haven't made it to the the point of where I came in and opened the book at Ezra because I just opened it up like I said and put my finger on there I'll know it when I arrive there though I'll know in the second year of Darius the king in the sixth month on the first day of the month The 
word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel. I'm understanding that we're in the sixth month of, um, who is that, uh, Elizabeth's pregnancy. The, 20, the, the 24th day is where the Spirit told me. On the 24th. So this is another divine like kind of experience that only happened twice to me. And it happened once in Ezra. It happened once. Um, where was that? I think it was Isaiah maybe. It was somewhere where it shows the 6th month and the 24th day. So this was three days ago that I had that experience. And I was to be I'm waiting for the 7th month. For I know that that is something special. We got we walking all the way back though. Six month on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Sheltel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak. So it's not Jeshua. Mmm. That's probably where the prophecy lies. There is a man called um, the Branch 222. Now, he is someone I, I deemed as a a priest okay he is someone that I was drawn to in the spirit and we ministered to one another through the Holy Spirit and he um, ministered to me the the gospel of well things pertaining to the gospel as far as gang stalking and being followed and a lot of stuff that happens when you're being gang stalked now I don't say this from a form of nervousness or whatever people say about it whatever but it is an actual true thing that the chosen people that I believe it happens to the chosen people of God the people who um, have a divine calling and you know, have some sort of shining around them that causes attention from those who are operating on this side of the veil and on another side of the veil. All right. There is, I'm, I'm sure, community organizations and it could stem from friends to family members. Now they have money. I've seen people just cash apps go crazy when they come around me. For I know that people are paid, you know what I mean, to execute certain things in the gang stalking realm. Now, Joshua, which is the branch 222 on YouTube, you can contact him if you like and verify what I'm saying. For I am going to send this to him and let him know that I posted this too. Um. Man, we operated in the power of the Holy Spirit. 